Hey everybody, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric, thank you so much for joining me and welcome to your June monthly readings for each and every zodiac sign, yeah? Um, if you've been following me for some time, you know that I used, I was doing readings bi-monthly for the zodiac signs, but that has become too taxing, okay? It's a lot, a lot of work and I have a lot going on um, in life, so I have to really pull it back a little bit. So instead of doing bi-monthlies, I'm just going to do it once a month for each zodiac sign. However, I am adding some extra oracle guidance into the readings. And this is something that I've been wanting to do for some time now. I'm really, really excited to bring this to you guys. For this month, I will be pulling, I will be using, um, you know, the traditional tarot deck. I have the Arcanum deck that I'm using this month. But then for oracle guidance, I'm going to be pulling action oracle guidance from the Oracle of the Unicorns by Cordelia Francesca Brobs. I love this deck because mainly I love, I just love unicorns. And then we have um, spiritual guidance from the Crystal Mandala deck by Alana Fairchild, okay? I'm, I'm really so happy to be doing it this way. Um, I actually wanted to add Oracle Guidance into it for some time now, but because it was bi-monthly and it was so much work to begin with, I didn't want to make the readings longer um, and take more time than I had to. But now because I'm doing this, you know, once a month, I'm definitely going to be keeping this Oracle Guidance in. I may switch it up. I think I am going to stick with the Crystal Mandala Oracle for spiritual guidance, but I may change over when it comes to action, uh, physical guidance from the oracles. Okay, I am available for private readings. Um, all of the information for that is in the description box below. So if anything resonates with you and you want to get a deeper understanding of it, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can email me and we can chat a little bit and I can schedule you and all and everything like that. Um, payments are through PayPal. I will send you a uh, an invoice from PayPal and we can do that. As soon as payment is secure, I will be able to uh, schedule your reading officially. Um, and just in case anyone was wondering if you are in the New York City area or you will be in the New York City area anytime soon, I am still doing readings at Om Shanti Bookstore. I'm sorry, bookshop in um, Manhattan on 14th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. The website is in the description box below. Um, if you do want to get a reading with me there, I highly recommend that you call ahead of time and schedule the reading. I am there every Monday from 11 to 5. Um, scheduling it that way will ensure that you get your reading um, at the time that you want. Otherwise, if you walk in, you know, there's a risk that I may not be available at that moment or whatever. Okay, please keep in mind, guys, that these are general readings. All right, so take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. And please do not try to fit something in where you know it doesn't belong. Okay, if something doesn't resonate with you, just let it go. Um, and also, if you know you're in the reading and you're getting in there and it's not really resonating with you, and you've been watching it for a few moments and it's still not resonating with you, just move forward. I do encourage you guys to check out not only your sun sign, but your moon, your rising, and your Venus, okay? Your sun sign um, is, you know, it is like the main thing, sure, but then watching your moon and your rising, at least, can help you get more information. And like, if you don't resonate with your sun sign, then you might resonate with your moon and rising. And then also, if you're looking for love guidance, I would highly recommend that you check out your Venus sign, okay? You could not, you may not resonate with any of them except for one, you know? So like, just check it out, see how you feel and see what resonates. And I believe that's all, yeah. So without further ado, let's get into the readings. Hello Libra, welcome to your reading for the month of June 2018. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's get into this. Spirit, please make me a clear channel for Librans, all Librans, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages for Libra for this time period of June 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Libra. I'm seeing yellow for you and a bit of green. So some of you could be healing some solar plexus situations, um, coming into your willpower, um, learning to come into your willpower. You may be facing some situations this month that um, kickstart some sort of process of reclaiming your will. 
um, which ultimately is going to help you heal some heart chakra issues. Yeah? All right, Libra. Okay, one more shuffle for you, Libra. All right, Libra. So your overall energy, we're starting off with ooh, death in reverse. Okay. There could be some resistance, but also I'm picking up that there you're in the process of death, of a transformation. Yeah, that you might be going through a bit of a dark night of the soul. Um, and this actually is falling in line with what I was picking up about self, uh, uh, self will. Um, but I also just wanted to say self worth. So if that resonates with you, go with it. We have the three of cups in reverse. We have the page of wands and we have the king of wands. I'm sorry, not the king, the queen of wands. All right. So some of you could be um, working on balancing your feminine energies. Um, some of you could be twin flames and so you and you're the divine feminine so you're showing up here. Um, some of you could have a uh, feminine energy, a fiery feminine energy. Um, this could symbolize your divine feminine if you're a divine masculine. This also just could symbolize uh, a person in your life that is a fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, um, or just somebody who embodies a really fiery aspect, has a lot of fire in their chart. What I'm picking up here is there is a death, obviously, because we have death here, but this is a death of um, negative social situations third parties even, because we do have the Three of Cups. Um, and I'm picking up that there is some sort of inspiration here to move forward in a new spiritual direction with the Page of Wands. And I am seeing this Page of Wands is looking directly, directly at this Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands is looking away and the black cat on this card really just popped out at me. Um, and the black cats tend to symbolize magic. The Queen of Wands is very, a, a very much a magical being, yeah? Um, Admiration, though. This person, whoever is symbolized by the Page of Wands, this could be you, Libra, or this could be someone else that is connected with you. And like, if this is someone else, Libra, if you're a divine feminine, you're showing up here as the Queen of Wands, and this Page of Wands is looking directly at you and admiring you. Like, whoa. Like celebrity status. <laughs> yeah. And in, 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 in essence, you're inspiring someone to... Be their best authentic self. And that is beautiful. Okay. Now this could be, that could be you Libra or <clears throat> like you're the one inspiring or Libra, you are the one looking up at this feminine energy, this fiery, passionate, um, um, magnetic, magical feminine energy. And just like in complete awe, like you just want to, you just want to pick her brain. You want to just learn everything from her. And that's fabulous. Moving forward, we have the King of Swords. So here you are, Libra. You are showing up. Excellent. It's nice to see you with, ooh, the Four of Wands. Okay. So there is a masculine energy, and I'm picking up here that this masculine energy is has marriage or solid foundations that could lead to marriage on their mind. Okay. This could be you, Libra. Um, if you're a divine masculine, this could be you. If you're the divine feminine, your masculine energies are coming forward and leading you on this path towards the foundation that can bring you a marriage if you're looking for that. Uh, you don't have to be a twin flame. You could just be a, uh, you know, a male or a, a feminine energy, feminine, a, do, a feminine dominant energy, and your masculine energies are coming forward um, because we are all, whether you're a twin flame or not, we are all in this process of balancing our masculine and feminine energies. So um, this could be coming forward within you uh, with intentions of cutting out the shit so that you can really lay down the foundation to, to start building the family and the home life that you truly want, okay? Moving forward, we have the Eight of Pentacles in reverse, okay, with the Queen of Cups. All right, so someone uh, someone has really stopped putting work into something. The Queen of Cups has been coming up in these readings that I'm doing today for the Zodiac signs, and her message for d damn near every time she comes out is a message in self-worth. And so what I'm picking up here with the Eight of Pentacles in reverse and the Queen of Cups, someone stopped working towards something. Someone stopped putting so much effort into something because they found that they, they started to realize their self-worth and they started to realize that's, that it, 
that all of their hard work and effort and investment that they were putting into this situation wasn't giving them anything back. And so now somebody has kind of like, has now in learning their self-worth, they are not even talking about it. And I know this is the Queen of Cups, but the Queen of, not the Queen of Swords, but the Queen of Cups is someone that really could hold on to her emotions and not let them show. And that's what I feel like is happening. And I'm feeling um, guided to state that these are just energies. It does not matter if you are a, 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 a mascu in masculine form, like male, and you could still be embodying these Queen of Cups energies. Um, and like I said, again, we all have masculine and feminine energies within us. All right. But whoever this feminine energy is, this feminine energy has retracted and is not expressing herself anymore. And that has influenced the masculine energy to like step up to the plate and look at things from an objective point of view and diplomatic point of view because the King of Swords is upright and start like looking at this foundation. I mean, there have been channeled messages by a lot of channelers and readers lately out there on YouTube land when it comes to Twin Flames that are saying the Divine Masculine does have marriage on the mind. And this is some sort of confirmation here, Libra. All right, moving forward, we've got the moon. And that is absolutely um, connecting with what the Queen of Cups is talking about in not sharing. But the moon is also bring, is also talk, speaking to me about intuition here and the Two of Cups in reverse. So, all right. So we do have the Two of Cups here. Um, so this is a soulmate relationship if we're talking about a relationship, okay? Um, the Two of Cups is in reverse. And that's saying to me that someone thinks that this situation is over. But really, it's not what it seems, is what the moon is saying. And what it, the moon is also saying is, trust your intuition. Because if your intuition is telling you, oh no, this is far from over, darling, believe it. That doesn't mean that you can like sit back on, on you know, um, sit back on your laurels and not take any action, not do anything new. No. But when you're, if your intuition is saying to you, this is not over, cause, cause it isn't, guys, believe it. You do, you, there is a deep soulmate connection here. And we very well could be talking about twin flames because we have the four of wands, which is an 11-11 and the two of cups, which is a soulmate card. And the four of wands talks about union. So a masculine energy here has union on the mind. And it's taking steps towards it too. That's what I, that's what I'm hearing as well. Next, ah, strength in reverse. You could be dealing with a Leo, maybe another fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Strength is usually the Leo card. Um, I want to pull the next card before I say anything. The Four of Cups. Okay, so yeah, I was picking up some sort of e overly egoic energy, but I didn't want to say anything about it until I got the other card, and we have the Four of Cups here. So the Four of Cups, but now both of these are in reverse. So what this is saying to me is, uh, there was a moment of unrequited love. Someone didn't really uh, uh, accept an offer that was being given to them, but that was ego-driven. It's because their pride and their ego were getting in the way and was like, nah, this is probably just going to fuck up my life and I don't want this around me, blah, 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 so I'm not going to do it. And then they let it pass them by and now they're upset about it. <laughs> um, but this release, there is a release of this energy now. Yeah. Moving forward, we have the Six of Cups in reverse. Soulmates, we really could be talking about uh, Twin Flames here with the Seven of Cups in reverse. So, um, healing. Okay, this is, the, this is what this death process is talking about here. Um, healing childhood wounds and releasing the um, illusionary aspects uh, of life associated with these wounds, releasing the, um, keeping the door open, keeping the options open. I feel like there is somebody here that was kind of playing the field, being a player, um, and not really settling down with anyone, but that's not necessarily because they're a bad person. It's because there are some things that happened in their childhood that kept them from wanting to commit, or there are some things that happened in their past, like some maybe some past relationships that hurt them in such a way that now they weren't going to commit to anybody. They were just going to run around get, getting their rocks off, doing whatever they want, because they didn't want to get hurt again. 
Again, it's not that because they're a bad person. They just did not want to get hurt. But now this is ending. This is being released. So this past trauma with the Six of Cups in reverse and this... Um, I mean, it's not the it's not you know the Knight of Wands or the King of Wands in reverse, um, but I am picking up some sort of promiscuous energy with the Seven of Cups in reverse, just because they're just leaving it open, you know, leaving their options open. Okay. Moving forward, we have Temperance in reverse. Okay, so there is a there's a process of balance coming through, and again, we really could be talking about Twin Flames. Because the Twin Flames cards are coming out here. We've got the Two of Cups. We've got the Six of Cups. We've got the Four of Wands. We've got the Temperance card, which talks about balance. It also talks about patience. And this is internal balance as well. Yeah? Internal alchemy. Ah, 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 with the world. Yeah! So Temperance um, in reverse is, is not bad. It's not talking about a blockage. It's talking about the process of balancing. It's also calling for patience, okay? But understand that with the world, there are major cycles ending, okay? So um, temperance is in reverse, yes, but then the world came out to reassure you that temp balance is happening. These cycles are ending, yeah? Moving forward, we have the Eight of Swords in reverse. So releasing this mental prison atmosphere, that's very good, with... Ooh, the Ten of Cups in reverse. Give me just a second. Let me channel this here really quick. Really, really quick. Um, someone feels like they're never going to get their Ten of Cups. But that is an illusion. Okay? It's an illusion. Someone is releasing themselves from this fear of not having the the, the Ten of Cups, their ultimate emotional family life fulfillment. Um, also, there could be some, yeah, there's also some release of, of attachment to maybe a certain person that you thought was going to be, is going to bring you your Ten of Cups. Maybe how that Ten of Cups situation is going to come to you because ultimately that was a prison. It kept you trapped in some negative cycles. It kept you trapped in, trapped in some icky energy that was actually blocking the Ten of Cups coming forward for you. Yeah. Okay. Finally, Libra, we have the Four of Pentacles in reverse. Yeah. I really like to see that because that's a release of this. Um, and it's coming up there right under the Four of Cups. That's really interesting. Um, it's the release of attachment. It's the release of miserly energies of just holding on to something for dear life afraid of losing something yeah with the hermit in reverse okay um i'm hmm. okay i'm seeing that there was a period of introspection here a period of going within to find your own light um and you're coming out of that or someone is coming out of that. And because of that, you are now able to release. Somebody found their inner self-worth. Somebody found their inner truth and realized that they don't have to hold on to this person or this certain circumstance or this certain way things are going to work out anymore. You don't have to. All right. Let's get into some action oracle guidance here from the unicorn. All right, best messages for Libra for the month of June. One, there's two more I'm hearing, okay? Two and one more, please, Spirit. Third message is right here. No, it's not. <laughs> All right. oh, there it is, three. Adventure, dare to do things differently. Manifest your travel dreams. Move, in a, move to a new location. There could be some relocating. Some of you might be moving. Um, but this is, <clears throat> this is speaking to the death cycle that's going, going through. Uh, you're being encouraged to step out on your own adventure, to step out on a new path that will be much more, more fulfilling for you. Next, we have receive. Be open to receiving goodness. Believe you are worthy of abundance. A gift is coming to you soon. 
Okay, so that res that's resonating with some people. I really don't feel like I have to explain more. Some of you will know what that means. And then finally, we have nature. Ground yourself. Find a sanctuary in nature. Connect with the elements. So as you're moving through this death process, it is really a great um, thing to connect with nature to help yourself balance and ground. Yeah, stay balanced and stay grounded. All right. So, spiritual guidance from the Crystal Mandala deck here. All right, spirit. Best messages for Libra. One card, please. Here we go. Sacred Ecosystem, now card number 26, Ascended Master Kuthumi and Moss Agate. Please excuse the shakiness, there's a ton of energy running through me. So let's see what this has to say, card number 26. Sacred Ecosystem. We bring you the blessing of the sacred ecosystem. This is a gift of conscious connection, supportive relationship, and magnetism, which attracts you, which attracts to you the souls in need of your light. Where I'm sorry, where you once may have felt as though you were not in the right place, this blessing shall shall now rectify that. You are meant to belong and contribute freely to your true soul community. You are destined to feel as though you have found your way home and can attract and be attracted to those that can support you and benefit from your support too. As you let go of past rejection, of the belief you have to accomplish your divine life mission on your own or fight to have your place in the world, you will allow the power of the sacred ecosystem to transform your life. Your life purpose shall flourish and your experience of conscious connection with the world around you will heal your heart and soothe your soul. Okay? There it is, Libra. Thank you so much for tuning in. I love you all, and I look forward to connecting with you guys for the month of July. Yeah? Take care. Much love. Mwah. Bye.